Hello there, it's me again. Occasional artist and also ink cheapskate. Now this here is Platinum Carbon Black. A truly marvellous fountain pen ink, because it's actually a pigmented ink, which, if you know anything about fountain pens, that's quite an achievement. Because most fountain pens will easily clog up with the slightest amount of pigment in it, which is why they usually use a dye-based ink. They achieve this by making the particle size extremely small, but it is a little bit on the pricey side. It's like $30 a bottle, or something like that. So I was thinking to myself, could I possibly make my own? So previously, I have tried to put this Sumi drawing ink in a fountain pen. This turned out to be a terrible, terrible drawing experience. The fountain pen nib felt really, really rough, and it skipped a lot, hardly ever made a solid line, and it just clogged the pen in no time. So clearly the particle size for the Sumi ink was simply far too big for any like proper capillary action to take place down the tines of the fountain pen. Because in the platinum carbon ink they use like nanoparticle size pigments or something like that anyway. I think I once read online somewhere in some obscure form someone tried to find out the particle size of this ink. I cannot find the website though, but from memory they said it was like around about 300 nanometers. So quite possibly if I just get a filter that's capable of filtering out the larger particle sizes which are not appropriate for a fountain pen, I could possibly use Sumi ink in the fountain pen and save myself a ton of money. But it has to be a really cheap filter, otherwise that will eat into the final cost of the ink. So what I reckon, you get some really cheap and affordable KN95 dust masks. Now according to the N95 specification for the dust masks, they're meant to filter out 95% of particles down to 0.3 microns. Which is 300 nanometers. Yes. You see where I'm going with this, can't you? So this is a KN95, so it doesn't meet the same specifications, but it should do a pretty good job, I reckon. Now I'm just going to pour ink in here and see what comes out. There seems to be a bit of a capillary action working its way up the mask. Unfortunately, no liquid is coming through. It's dry on the opposite side of the mask. It's like hydrophobic or something. So first, to get the ink to pass through this extremely hydrophobic material that the mask is made out of, I've pre-soaked and washed the mask with soap and water and then rinsed it out so it's very well hydrated all the way through. Let's pour some ink in here. Yes. Oh, wow. It's really soaking up that ink. There we go. It's a coming through. There's a lot of capillary action. It's actually working in the opposite direction. Point the whole thing skywards. Okay. Do not fold any part of your mask downwards. Isn't it marvellous? Look at all that dirt cheap fountain pen ink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And instead of, you know, using the actual piston filler, I'm just going to fill it with a syringe. This is a very messy process. Now we just have to wait for the ink to come through. Okay, the ink has finally come through, and I must say, it actually feels really good. Wow, it actually feels, it feels really smooth. Okay, so now it is long-term review time of this ink. Now, I'd like to say that the whole premise of this video about saving money by making your own ink was a, a bit silly, actually. I'd like to apologize. I know I said it's an expensive ink, but when you do the maths and compare it to, let's say, disposable fine liners with pigmented ink in them, it's very reasonable. I think most fine liners you buy don't often contain more than two milliliters of ink, a single one milliliter is probably quite common. 
And also, for example, the international short cartridge for fountain pens only contain like 0.8 millilitres of ink. Most of my piston refill converters look like they don't even hold that much. So you could be getting up to 60 fine liners worth of ink, or refilling your tiny fountain pen cartridge for $30. It's a lot better than paying $433 for like Pigma Microns at some local stationery store. That's how much it would cost for me, around where I live. Or maybe 217 if they happen to contain 2 milliliters of ink. That's the best case scenario though. But I really doubt if Pigma Microns contain 2 milliliters of ink. The one I bought dried out very quickly. Now after using this modified ink for a while now, I can safely say that I would not swap it for Platinum Carbon ink if I had the choice. I would file this knowledge under Ink Survival Strategies. Just in case you run out of ink and civilization happens to collapse at the same time. And you can't imagine, much like myself, anything worse than ink running out it. Sorry, I got a bit emotional there. Okay, You can't imagine anything worse than ink running out of your fountain pen. Food, water, ink, shelter, I guess. It's important to set your priorities correctly. So how did this ink behave? First test was just the ink you saw me make at the beginning. Just filtered, and it performed quite okay. The ink flow was a little slow, but it wasn't skipping too often either. In the second test I did, I added a little water to it. Still plenty black enough. I've seen other inks that are just as black, which are meant to be black, but now the ink flow was fast enough for reasonably fast sketching. And I was quite happy with it. Until I realized, unlike the platinum carbon ink, where I can just leave the pen cap on for a week or more and then just use the pen again like nothing happened, because the ink just starts flowing immediately as soon as I put the pen down to paper. This filthy sumi ink seemed to clog up the pen, stopping the ink flow with the pen cap on in a matter of hours. So I would need to poke and scribble with it, which sometimes didn't even work, so I'd had to put water on the nib to get it going again. I can't have that. No, 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 no. I think the reason for this is that the sumi ink has some kind of water-soluble binder in it, which behaves like some kind of glue. I left two pieces of paper with a few drops of ink sandwiched between them, and it certainly behaved like glue. And then I had an idea, which actually worked. Breaking down the binder in the ink, and also lubricating the ink, with soap. And I use this dish soap. Tea green and lime. It smells nice. Unlike the sumi ink, which smells a bit like dirt and water. So I added a few drops and noticed a little difference. I no longer needed to dip the nib in water to get it going again. So I added more soap. So the final ink recipe, and I don't know the ratios I did for this, so I'm sorry about that, is filtered sumi ink, a little water, and dish soap. Now the ink flows very smoothly. I can even leave the pen capped for up to a few days and the ink will still be flowing quite well with only a little bit of scribbling needed to get the ink flowing back to normal again. I was even able to do rapid sketching with it with no skipping. So as you can see, after doing my second drawing with this version of the ink, I then attacked it with cheap watercolor brush pens to see how water resistant it is in a practical setting, instead of, you know, just pouring water on it or some nonsense. And it was good enough. Uh, a few light passes with the brush did very little. I did notice that after doing multiple passes that the lines were smudging a little. Uh, didn't bother me though. It didn't detract from what I was trying to achieve. I just used it as a shading effect really. So there you go. You can, at least on a temporary basis, use Sumi ink an ink probably made from soot in a fountain pen. You just need to modify it a bit so it can be more reliable. Actually, while I'm recording this audio, I have the pen in hand right now. And off camera, I'm just going to see if, after 24 hours, which was the last time I used it, 
if this ink can still flow beautifully. Let's find out. Oh, yes. oh it does. It still works. It's still flowing fine, but it's just a bit slow initially for rapid sketching. Perfectly fine for writing, though. It's, you wouldn't notice. Okay, goodbye. Until next time, I have more fountain pens to look at next time. Gin house. Oh, yes. Some new gin house. I hope you're excited, because I am.